the Bible says that the wind began to blow in that upper room and we would call that a miracle the miracle did not stop in the upper room because the same wind that blew in the upper room kicked the door of the upper room open and men stumbled out under the power of God being accused of being drunk they said among themselves we are not drunk as ye suppose being it but the third hour of the day but this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel that in the last day I will pour out my spirit upon your sons and daughters your old men will dream dreams and your young men will see visions and the wind did not stop blowing there it blew in Acts 19 at a city called Ephesus when believers who knew Jesus were filled with the power of the Holy Ghost but it did not stop there the wind blew in the second and the third century and when human secularism and the blanket of religion tried to blow out the fire of God men stood up under the power of God and the wind continued to blow it didn't stop there at a, at a meeting called the Cane Ridge Revival in the mountains of Kentucky the glory of the Lord began to fall and that wind began to blow again but it didn't stop there it went all the way to the Unicoi Mountains of Tennessee and in 1896 at the Shear Schoolhouse Revival that same wind began to blow that blew in the upper room but it didn't stop there at a place called the Azusa Street Revival the wind of the spirit began to blow and shook a nation but it didn't stop there right now in this hour in this season the wind that blew at Pentecost praise God it's blowing again and it's blowing on the cities of the earth so that men and women may come to a knowledge of Jesus somebody praise the Lord for the Holy Ghost I believe that the same wind wants to blow in our lives this morning. Entitled message, this is simply another message simply called Another Pentecost. My prayer has continually be, God, do it again. Lord, send a wind of your spirit like never before. And we're going to turn in our Bibles to John chapter 14, verse 12. If you're a new believer, you're watching online and you're like, what is Pentecost? By the end of the service, my prayer is that you would have an encounter with Jesus himself. In John chapter 14, verse 12 through 17, the scripture says, before we read that, in John, 7, uh, John chapter 14, I want to read just a couple things before we read that scripture verse. A leper is healed in the marketplace. A paralyzed man leaps from his bed. A small bit of food feeds a mass of people. A short prayer in a storm, clouds, turn on a dime. The gospel is preached in one language but heard in another. A desperate woman with a flow of blood is miraculously healed. A demonized man chained up for years is delivered and set free. The sound of a mighty rushing wind is heard during a meeting of believers, yet there was wind, no wind outside. Withered limbs are restored. Deaf man ears can now hear. Blind eyes of a child can now see. A man raised from the dead, and Jesus appears in a vision to one of his chief persecutors. Amazing stories, you will probably think like I read this strictly from the Bible, and although there are accounts that speak of these same miracles, these accounts were actually taken 10 to 15 years ago about what God continues to do. See, miracles were not just done for the Bible times. I believe that God is still doing great things. And to be honest with you, I am thrilled to hear that. You say, why is God continuing to do miracles? First of all, people have been praying this prayer, Lord, your kingdom come, your will be done. After 2,000 years of people praying, Matthew 6.10, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven, it's now beginning to happen. All over the world, on every continent, God is answering our prayers and is doing amazing things. The second reason why God continues to do great things is because Jesus told us these things would happen. So we shouldn't be surprised. 
in John chapter 14, verse 12 through 14, the scripture says, very truly, Jesus himself is speaking these words. Whoever believes in me will do works I have been doing, and they will do even greater things than these, because I am going to the Father, and I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. The third reason why God continues to move in the supernatural is because the Holy Spirit, thirdly, has been sent to all believers. In John chapter 14 and 15 through 17, listen to what Jesus says. If you love me, keep my commands, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and will be with you forever, the spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because they neither see him or know him. But watch. But you know him, for he lives with you, and the Holy Spirit, for all believers, he now lives in us. So if Jesus told us to pray his kingdom come, his will be done, if Jesus told us that expect to do greater works than what he even did, and if the Holy Spirit has been unleashed to live inside every believer, why should we be surprised that God is still moving in the supernatural? This is why I think we come back to what we've been talking about for several weeks at Marlton Assembly of God. Now is the time for the Holy Spirit. Can someone say amen? amen. Living with this new and healthy sense of expectation of what God wants to do, God has been strongly impressing upon my heart that there has been a major shift in expectation. Sadly, not a healthy expectation, but there's been a shift in negative thinking. Because instead of keeping our eyes on Jesus, as Hebrews tells us, the author and finisher of the faith, instead, many of us fix our eyes on problems. We fix our emotional and spiritual senses on the bad things that are happening in our world. Now listen, I am no fool. When I look around, I see the same trouble you see, but I don't see the trouble through the eyes of Jamel. I see promises that God can work even through changing times. For many of them, their, our mindsets have been dominated by things like a pandemic, social distancing and masks and social injustice and politics. I can go on and on. And that has caused the church to lose its focus. And many believers have allowed even the enemy to rob you of your joy. But I'm here to tell you that God is ready to get ready to send us our eyesight back so that we can see like Jesus, walk like Jesus, touch like Jesus so that our world can know who Jesus is. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. But for that very reason, it's going to take us to live in this great expectation and anticipation. I, be, I believe with all of my heart that this is no, no chance or accident that God used Sundays like this on Pentecost Sunday to renew our minds. If you're newer to the faith, you're watching online, the Christian faith is celebrating Pentecost. It's one of the festivals that commemorates the harvest and has been celebrated by Jewish people since the time of Moses. But it also is the day Christians celebrate both the outpouring of the Spirit, but it also celebrates the birth of the church. Over several weeks, I just spoke this even on Wednesday night, powerful move of the Spirit. In Acts 1, it speaks of 50 days, as Pastor John just mentioned, after the resurrection of Jesus, the early believers were to celebrate the, tra the traditional day of Pentecost. However, just prior to this, Jesus told his disciples to pray, wait, and stay in the city of Jerusalem until you've been baptized with power from on high. In other words, they were to wait for the promised Holy Spirit, as described in John 14, to come and fill them in a new way. I don't know about you, Martin, the symbol of God, Velsberg, the symbol of God. I need a fresh move of the Spirit of God in my life. It talks about the account of Acts chapter 2, verse 1 through 4. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly they heard the sound like a blowing of a violent wind that came from heaven. And it filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and it came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and they began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit of God enabled them. 
You know what strikes me about this first account of the Bible here that describes this supernatural move? Yes, it was the whole miraculous element. I get excited about that. It was the exact fulfillment of the prophecy spoken in Joel chapter 2, which is pretty amazing. Of course, it's, it's the outpouring of the Holy Spirit it wasn't just for special people, but it's for every believer who calls on the name of the Lord. That's incredible. And the fact that this miracle, when it took place at the outpouring, it doesn't just, it's not just for you, but it's power for witnessing. Hear me. It's amazing that after the empowering of the Holy Spirit comes, it releases us to effective ministry or service. That's incredible. Thousands of people got saved. That's incredible. But we oftentimes miss a critical piece here on what Pentecost brought. If you remember, just six weeks prior to this outpouring, first, they, the early believers, had seen their hopes of a kingdom and a king that would come and miraculously vanquish the Roman government from their oppression. They saw that all their hope was gone. This hope of a new kingdom and nation seemed to be dissolved right in front of their sights when they witnessed their savior Jesus dying on the cross. Their excitement was immediately replaced by fear and hopelessness. Just like that, we face the same type of hopelessness if we get our eyes off of Jesus. Their expectations of a coming kingdom rule of King Jesus have been now replaced with an unhealthy expectation that things were going to get real bad really fast. And I love what it says in John chapter 20, verse 19, as it describes the emotion of those early disciples before the baptism of the Holy Spirit took place. And it says, on the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came, he stood among them and said, I love these words, peace be with you. You may want to underline the word for fear because everything these disciples were doing was no longer being motivated by faith or the promise that Jesus has shared about the greater things to come or the promise of the Holy Spirit or the promise of this Messiah coming back so powerfully. No, all of it was now being overtaken by the element of fear and it replaced uh, this excitement with a spirit of pessimism. It's the oldest trick in the book that the enemy still uses for our lives, doesn't he? He will use anything to get our thoughts dominated and ruled by fear because fear still paralyzes us as believers. In Proverbs chapter 23, verse 7, it says, For such as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So if fear and pessimism rule in our hearts, they will become our masters and will begin to become their slaves. But Jesus wants to change the upper room experience. Scholars as well as archaeological discoveries tell us that it was the same upper room where Jesus ate the Passover with his disciples. Became now the place where these disciples were staying during their entire time. But this room had become, for most of them, this upper room, the same upper room, has become a prison of fear, pessimism, and a loss of faith and expectation. And here's why I think this is incredible, because in the midst of their fear, Jesus says, go to the same room because I'm about to meet you in your place of fear. It's this same room where Jesus sends them back to pray, wait for something to happen. See, sometimes God will bring you back to your place of loss. This was the same place where Jesus told his disciples that he would be leaving them. Sometimes God will bring you back to the place of failure. This was the same place where Judas denied Jesus and walked out on him and where Jesus looked at Peter and said, you're going to deny me. Sometimes God will take you back to the place of fear. This was the same room, that place where Jesus ran back to hide, or the disciples ran back to hide, as Jesus was being crucified. Sometimes the Lord allows us to revisit those places in our lives because I believe that God wants to show up in those same places that once crippled you. 
He wants to take you from places that labeled you defeat and rename it places of victory. That's what I think about Acts 1. That's why I believe God wants to move. If you're lonely, fearful, and doubtful here, God wants to meet you in this place. And he was going to get their attention back on him. So what about Pentecost? He says, wait. Wait until you're clothed with power from on high. Let's ask a question. What was God going to do to attack this fear that locked these disciples up? The strategy was released in three great things Jesus proclaimed to his disciples. And the very first thing he needed to do to replace their fear. I want to read those words again. He said, Jesus came and stood among them. And he said, peace be with you. His first solution in writing them for this new Pentecost was issuing them an overcoming peace. In John 14, 27, Jesus stepped into the room filled with anxiety, fear, failure, confusion, and in the midst of everything surrounding these disciples, he speaks peace. From that point on, you see the element of faith being restored to the disciples. Their boldness is already beginning to be replaced or replace their fears. It will require the presence of Jesus. You may be fearful in this place. Your fear will not back down to you. Your fear at the sight of Jesus in this room must bow its knee. I'm convinced that these disciples were brought back to Jesus' words in John 14. He said, peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I don't know give you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Anyone needs God's peace today. The second solution Jesus gave to ready them for this new Pentecost was an overwhelming power. An overwhelming power. It's important that we keep clearly in mind that Jesus' end game was for, from the beginning that every person would be filled with the Spirit's power. Jesus knew above all things that the kingdom could never be moved forward without power in his name. See, man, you and I were so weak, but the power of the Holy Spirit gives us the ability to do what we cannot do in our normal selves. This had to be a supernatural endowment from on high. Why? Because Zechariah 4, 6 says, it's not by might nor by power, but it's by my spirit, says the Lord. And so it is with us today in this world of ever-increasing confusion and wealth and technology. We're getting our eyes off of God. It still must be Christ alone. In this generation where you see the iPhone and the iPad, may those things be replaced with the great I am. It's Jesus. It's Jesus. One of the major components of the reason the Spirit fell with power on the day of Pentecost was for personal holiness and victory. It was the disciples saying, God, we cannot do this in our own natural strength and ability. God's power was being held back due to sin and unbelief and wrong priorities. But God is saying, come to the upper room again. In Luke 24, 49. He says, I'm going to send you what my father has promised. But stay in the city until you've been clothed with power from on high. At the presence of Jesus, and he meets us in that upper room. By his presence alone, he says, I'm giving you an overflowing promise. In John 14, 12. He says, very truly I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing. And they will do even greater things than these because I am going to the Father. Let me read that list that I read to you a little bit early, a little bit slower. A leper is healed in the marketplace. A paralyzed man leaps from his bed. A small bite of bit of food feeds a mass amount of people. A short prayer in a storm clouds turn on a dime. The gospel is preached in one language but heard in another. A desperate woman with a flow of blood is miraculously healed. 
A demonized man chained up for years is delivered and set free. The sound of a mighty rushing wind is heard during a meeting of believers, yet there is no wind outside. Withered limbs are restored, deaf hear, blind see. A man is raised from the dead, and Jesus appears in a vision to one of his chief persecutors. If indeed Jesus made a promise to his followers, that includes you and me, that an overflowing greater work will be done in his name. Our world desperately needs spirit-filled people to be ministered through. As I was on my way to the church service this morning, I was reminded by the Holy Spirit himself. And he just told me to tell you that Pentecost, what God does in this room, it doesn't stop in this room. That what happens in this room is so that we can take it out into that room. And that our world will be turned right side up, upside down for the glory of God. When I speak of another Pentecost, God is moving by his spirit in our services, amongst our staff, amongst the pastors. God has given us vision despite what's happening. God is also moving within our Ground Zero students. It was Wednesday nights when we got back flowing into our, our United Prayer Services, and it was just wonderful, beautiful spirit. If you're not in our United Prayer Service and you're watching online, praise God, thank God. Um, hopefully you're, you're experiencing the presence of God right, right from your living room, which is wonderful. But coming into the prayer service and being ministered around this altar has been absolutely incredible. And you're going to hear three powerful testimonies of how God moved by his spirit and God gave us another Pentecost. Check out this video. My Holy Spirit journey started when I was 12. In 2015, when I was water baptized, I officially wanted to seek what God had for me in the life that he has provided for me. So I guess I should preface it with the fact that I didn't really believe that the Holy Spirit was some, a gift that was for me. Growing up, Jehovah's Witness was not like the biggest, you know, culture back then. We did a completely different thing than Christianity. Uh, Christianity. The Holy Spirit was actually never mentioned, um, definitely being baptized by the Holy Spirit. Um, that was actually kind of like looked down upon because that was not Jehovah's belief. But when I was officially a Christian, I never thought that being baptized in the Holy Spirit was actually a gift that a lot of Christians received when they fully seeked Him. Um, so I had had different circumstances throughout high school when, after I was saved, um, that being sensitive to God, I felt like He had led me to different people to have conversations and say different words of encouragement. That was just nothing, like the baptism of the Holy Spirit, specifically in tongues, just never happened for me. And it was something that I had prayed for. It was just like, all right, well, I see God working in my life in this way, this way, this way, but maybe this isn't for me. I was 12 years old when I first started seeking after the Holy Spirit at a kid's camp. I was always curious about those, the gifts and the Holy Spirit. Like I kept always like wanting it. I kept pursuing it. I kept asking questions like to any pastor that I even saw. Like. I would just be like, what is the Holy Spirit? Like, I've heard so many conferences. I grew up going to so many services about it. And I kept, like, seeking for it. And I was, I, I for seven years, I was seeking. And I kept seeking, seeking, seeking. I remember doing the 21-day Daniel fast that the church did. And I took majority of that time to actually seek the Lord and ask Him, Okay, Lord, am I ready yet for the baptism of the Holy Spirit? I always had a desire that um, I was able to ask for it, but at the same time, I kind of didn't want it because um, I didn't know how it was per like done in a proper way. It wasn't until I came to Marlton that I had experienced like a full church fast, um, but we're encouraged to have like a list of things that we're praying for, and this 
period was kind of when I was like, okay, so one of the things that was on my list was being filled with the Holy Spirit along with spiritual breakthrough with my, for my family. We were um, actually currently doing a whole chapter in, the, um, in this book called the Purple Book, and it was one of the books that we used for discipleship. And the chapter was about spiritual gifts. And we were doing all this stuff about talking about which gifts we have and like different spiritual gifts. It was just something like it just kept coming up in that com in conversations more and more in February. I remember February 9th, um, I was in my room and I wrote out a list of things that was just festering in my spirit, in my heart. And that's when I started breaking down and asking God, okay, Lord, like, I know what you're trying to do. And I'm here with my whole heart. I just, can, just show me how to continue to do this. And I got to the last point where I felt literally from the tip of my head down to the tip, tip of my toes, um, this warmth river um, of his love and compassion and his forgiveness and mercy and grace. And I, can't remember exactly how it all went down, but I know that my mouth started to open and it wasn't me anymore. And it just kept flowing and flowing and flowing. And that's when I knew God was using me and speaking through me um, with the baptism of the Holy Spirit and then gave me the interpretation um, right afterwards. I remember service just getting very, very serious and it felt like I couldn't rest or be still in my seat. Like I had to move. Going up to the altar was almost like, all right, God, this is me responding to you. What do you want to do? I'm open, I'm here. Very, very steadily, I just felt like God was like opening me up and just a heavy sense of peace and overwhelming love came over me. Um, and I was baptized with the Holy Spirit. Coming into the UPS service that night, I was really excited because Pastor Jermel was preaching and um, the worship, like I came in worshiping and I was like, God, I just want to give it all to you. And as he's speaking about the altar call, like God was like, not yet, not yet, not yet. And then finally he goes, go. And so I went up to the altar and I fell to my knees and I just started letting everything go. And I was baptized in the Holy Spirit. And I remember calling my best friend over to my room and crying in her arms with excitement and overwhelming joy. And then I called my spiritual father and tears of joy and, you know, excitement again and like, to this day, I remember like it was just yesterday how when I surrendered everything to God that he needed me to, you know, let go of, it brings joy and warmth to a soul that needed it the most. Since I was baptized, I've had a deeper passion for the Lord, uh, a desire even more to even seek him, like even more my alone time with him. I can't go a day. I notice when I haven't spent enough time with God or I notice when I haven't been honest with God, I notice when I haven't been open with God because I can feel it. There's an overwhelming love for God. One that I never would have witnessed in my entire life. It all comes down to the love that he has for me, honestly. Um, he knew that I wanted it, he knew I seeked for it, he knew that I desperately wanted it to my strongest extent. And then when that happened, it was like, wow, he actually loves me, he actually cares for me, he wants what's best for me, and the purpose that he has walked out for me. And it has just overwhelmed my entire walk, that God not only loves me unconditionally, but he's also going to use me to love unconditionally to children that need me. Can we thank God for his touch? Never gets old hearing people experience the 
blessing and presence of God. When God first touched me and I remember getting saved, I thought that was incredible. I remember coming into Velsburg and of God and Pastor John was our pastor and heard him speaking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I'm like, what is that? There's more? And I remember coming up to the front and, and it was, we would have these Pentecost rallies and leading up to, to, to Pentecost Sunday and I just remember, just like our young people, just like our students just said, God, I want more. I'm hungry. I'm hungry for more. So maybe you're here. You say, what's some of the keys to being filled with the Holy Spirit? Are you hungry for more? Do you desire more of Jesus? Do you desire more of his presence in your life? What's the key here? Each and every one of us need to make sure that we get filled and baptized in the Spirit of God. That's what Pentecost is all about. A personal Holy Spirit encounter. Saying, God, I want to personally encounter you. A personal engagement with the presence of Jesus. What I love most about the baptism of the Holy Spirit is that when you're baptized in the Spirit, Jesus himself is touching you. It's him. He wants to minister to his people. And a personal plea to God for a fresh anointing of boldness, for saying, God, I want to be your witness. I want to tell people about Jesus. I want my life to just, just draw people to you, Jesus. This past, uh, yesterday, Nick is here, man. We had a three-on-three three three competition. The field house was so full. It was awesome. It's just a great event for a wonderful cause. And, and uh, Nick made me play. He made me play. I was like, oh, I don't really want to play basketball anymore. No, nope, I'm playing. This is cool. I played like three minutes, you know, let the younger guys play. But I just love being in the atmosphere where there were people. And we were walking around, shaking hands, hugging necks. I mean, just whatever. I said, oh, God, look at these people. There's so many people coming our way. Lord, they don't know you. Who, who, who's going to share Jesus with people around well, who's going to do it? And God says, I want to use you. I want to use a spirit-filled church. Everybody that walked in uh, to the field house was like, what is this place? Who, who built this? What, what is this? This place was built so that you can be in here. This place was built so that we can reach people with the gospel. Listen to me. Jesus still wants to meet people in a powerful way. And God wants to use you to help bring Jesus to people that need him the most. This morning, I believe this with all of my heart, that God wants to minister to you, that God wants to speak to you, that the Holy Spirit wants to give you a fresh touch of his spirit. This morning, can we stand all together as the team gets in place? We're just going to wait on the Lord this morning. You know, it's one thing to talk about the Holy Spirit. There's another thing when the Holy Spirit says, I want to speak. Wonderful thing that Jesus uses people, it's incredible. But I believe the Spirit himself wants to speak to us. And maybe you're here, and just like those early disciples, man, you got a lot of distractions. You got a lot of fears. I believe that the presence of God, you say, man, I walked in here heavy burden. I believe God wants to lift that this morning. But why? It will be at the presence of Jesus and the power of his spirit at work in you. You might have come for a service, but you're going to leave being equipped and powered by almighty God. Father, in Jesus' name. Lord, there's someone watching online. There are some of us here. And God, we need a touch from the Holy Spirit. As I begin to pray, can we just lift up our hands, maybe just in a comfortable position, maybe by your arms. Some may lift it up above their head. But just saying, God, just with a sign of your, your extremities, you're saying, God, I am open to all that you have for me, Jesus. Lord, just like our Ground Zero students said, I'm willing to give it all up for you, Jesus. I'm willing to carry my burdens to you. I'm willing to lay it down. I'm willing, Jesus, for you to have your way in my life, Lord. Come, 
Holy Spirit. And in that same position, you may be here, you're watching online, you're saying, Jesus, I, I, I need to receive you first as my Savior. Before even this wonderful baptism in the Spirit, when the Holy Spirit comes on you, maybe your God is saying, first receive my Spirit to bring you to salvation. That's still the greatest miracle of when people say, yes, Jesus, I want to ask you to come into my life and to change me and make me brand new. And maybe you're here, you're watching online, and you say, yes, that's me. I need the working of the Holy Spirit this morning, if that is you. I want you to simply, come on, all over this congregation, all online, can we just whisper this wonderful prayer to God? Say it with me. I know we got mask on, but say it with me. Jesus, come into my heart. Come into my life. Lord, I believe that you died on the cross and you rose in three days. And I also believe that the same power that raised Jesus from the dead is the same power that now lives in me. I give you my heart. I give you my life. Change me in Jesus' name. Come on, and everyone said this morning, if you pray that prayer for the first time, make sure you see one of the pastors right after. We want to help you grow in your walk with God. But here at Marlton and in Valesburg and online, we believe that God wants to move by his spirit. And maybe you walked in in fear, you're going to leave in victory because the power of almighty God is going to overshadow you like never before. Don't move around. Don't rush out. Allow the spirit of God to take root in your life. Come on, Marlton. We're ready. Now is the time. Let's experience the power of God from these altars. Let's say, Jesus, you did it back in the book of Acts. But Lord, I need it now in 2021 to be filled to overflowing. Come on, let's, let's stand, let's come. Let's ask God, say, oh Lord, would you fill us again? Come on, come on, Merlton. Let's see what God wants to do. The Lord is here. The Lord is here. The Lord is here. Oh God, Lord, we bless your name. Come, find a place, and let's call on his name. Oh, he is Lord, living. And Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what.
this morning before the Bible says they waited on the Lord they waited on the Lord and you walked in here and you saying, God, I am hungry for a move of the Holy Spirit in my life. I believe that the Holy Spirit wants to come and settle our hearts, settle our hearts. But you may be here and you may be at this altar or in your seat or online. And you're saying, I'm, I'm beginning to sense God move. Something's beginning to move in my heart. Don't resist the Holy Spirit. Welcome the Holy Spirit. You say, God, so what, 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 Lord? What do you desire me to do? The Bible says they lifted up their voice and they magnified God. Maybe for some of us, God's going to use this service for you to begin to learn how to lift up your voice and to worship Jesus and to glorify him. So even now, come on, as we're waiting on the Lord, can we just in our own words, let's begin to just tell God how good he is. How wonderful he is. In your own words, we bless you, Jesus. Come on, Marlton. Come on, Bellsburg. We bless Jesus in this house. Oh, we bless you. Wait on the Lord. Jesus this morning the Lord wants to speak to us Holy Spirit come This morning, if you are here, you're saying, God, I need a touch from the Holy Spirit himself. And if you're here, you're saying, Pastor Mel, I, I'm hearing it, but I just, I, I desire to be filled with the Holy Spirit as the Spirit enabled them. God wants to minister. Don't be afraid. Don't allow your fears to hold you in. But it's when you're lifting up the name of Jesus, when you're calling on his name, the Lord wants to meet us in the power of his spirit. Father, come and we thank you. Holy Spirit, I pray for every person watching online. I pray for every person 
around these altars. I pray for every person that are sitting in these, these seats, Lord. Holy Spirit, I pray that you would use us in greater ways. Lord, let this be the time, let this be the hour where we see entire families coming to you, Jesus, with surrendered hearts and the power of your spirit is moving and operating through hearts that are open and available to you, saying, yes, Jesus, come. Holy Spirit, come. God, I pray, Lord, that not one person will perish. But, oh, God, that more and more and more people will come to the saving knowledge and the demonstration of the Spirit's power through Jesus Christ, our Lord. God, do it again. God, I pray that your churches will be full of people that are calling on your name. God, do greater works through willing people saying, Lord, come and minister. Father, we thank you and we we rejoice in you. We love you. In Jesus' name. Pastor John, would you come? Thank you, Lord. So cool. Thank you, Pastor Jermel. We're hungry for all that God has for us, the working of the Holy Spirit. Let me just give a little clarity. What we heard was in the, in the sanctuary to my left and to your right was someone who lifted up their voice and gave a tongue. And the Bible says whenever there's a tongue, there should always be an interpretation. And it's very, if you've been in our church services, sometimes someone who lifts their voice in a tongue, there'll be an interpretation from somebody else. But the Bible also says it could be the same person. So that's just what you heard and that's what you experienced. Someone who gave a tongue and interpretation. I hope and pray through the clarity that you heard it, that that brought encouragement to you. Um, it did to me, that, that God would give us strength and encouragement. What Pastor Jamel was preaching about with spirit baptism is a, the second working of grace after salvation that all of us would be filled with the Holy Spirit or continue filled. That doesn't need to be interpreted because that's just at the altar or in your home. That's just, some people call that a prayer language or a touch from the Lord. But sometimes when you, when you kind of have the working of the Holy Spirit, think kind of collide and kind of move like that and it's okay that's why God gives pastors and workers to kind of help just kind of guide it through but there is a spiritual temperature at Marlton that God wants to continue to do things and I don't know if you can sense it but even as I was sitting there Pastor Jamel was preaching we thank God for people that teach and preach but when the Holy Spirit moves it's more than the person or the presenter it's what God wants to do and we're sensing that. Like, I just really believe that God's not done with us. He's working. If you sense something, this is biblical. It's never really easy to navigate a move of God, but God's bigger than all the challenges, and we can trust him. Thank you, Pastor Jamel, for the word to prepare our hearts. If you're seeking spirit baptism, keep seeking. Go home. Take a walk. Enjoy this beautiful day. Be at, be at ease. Say, Lord, I just want to receive, and I want to be used by you and be empowered to share the message. I want to be, God, do work in my life. Help me to keep growing. God wants to do a great thing. Amen? I believe that. So hopefully a little clarity there. Let me just give you a couple next steps as we get ready for our next service. A couple next steps. One is the United Prayer Service. Um, this Wednesday, it's a big Wednesday night. Please, be, and then Memorial Day, you heard it. It's next week, 10 o'clock and then summer service time. So you kind of know that's a shift. But it's a, we're just really believing God, that God's got some things special for us, just bending around the corner. And I'll explain that as we go. Let me pray for you. The Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. In Jesus' name, everyone said amen. God bless you. Have a great day in the Lord. Yowza! What a church service today. We love the fact that it's Pentecost Sunday and we know that God's Holy Spirit is residing here. We want to invite you back to all the things coming up here at Marlton and especially next Sunday for Memorial Day services. You can find out all the details on our website along with the registration. Thanks so much for being here and we hope you have a great week. See you later.